Imagine that you're dropping rocks down into a bottomless pit. Some rocks might fall straight down to the bottom, but the passage is not always clear as they fall. There's all sorts of ledges which cause the rocks to get stuck. As the rocks hit the ledges, they pile up on top of each other and they spill over to both sides. And we'll get into the details about how the rocks fall later on. But our goal is to drop the rocks and watch them pile up until it seems like they no longer pile up because they just keep spilling off and falling down further and further past any ledge. And we want to count up how many of those rocks there are. To be able to create this situation, we're given some input data that looks like this. These are coordinates that we have to use to form the ledges, and each line in the file represents a path or a ledge. So first we have to figure out how to draw lines by moving the cursor along each path of coordinates. Notice that if I just keep pressing 2W, my cursor jumps from one number to the next or from one point to the next. So that's great. That's how we can move around to each point. But this does break down um, if I go to the top here and press 2W, 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 2W. If I move to the next path, you see it breaks the movement. Now my cursor's on the, the comma. So to fix that, I can just add uh, some white space between each path. And so now if I try that again, now I'm moving how I want to. And I can do that clear to the end of the file. And so the first modification that I'm going to make is using the substitute command. I'm going to do percent %s to substitute across every line in this buffer in this file. And I want to match on any time there's a new line. Uh, I want to replace that with two new lines. So we'll run that. Now we have spaces between each path. And so we can now move from point to point, uh, no problem, but we have to actually figure out how to copy each point as we move along the path. Uh, to do that, I'm going to use the yank command and I'm going to store each point. I'm going to yank that into a named register, A through D. So we're going to do four points at a time. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to jump to the top of the file here. I'm going to start out with double quote A, yank inner word, and then I'm going to do 2W, double quote B, yank inner uh, word. I think I made a typo. Uh, yeah, I made a typo there. So double quote B, yank inner word, 2W again, double quote C, yank inner word. I just keep doing this. And then one more time, 2W, double quote D, yank inner word. So yeah, our plan is basically to uh, grab or yank four points at a time and then draw that and then repeat it but uh, this actually still won't quite work for long paths such as this one and that's because uh, we're drawing a line every four points so when the path is longer than four points we need to include the previously drawn point as the first point of the one we're about to draw we can fix that problem though by duplicating um, every point that is in a path except for the start and the ending point so get ready for another cool substitute command we'll do it uh, this time we'll match a space followed by a digit, well, technically one or more digits, and then a comma, and then again one or more digits, and then another space. So this is what we're matching on. And we want to duplicate this by saying, give me the entire match that I had, put an arrow, and put the entire match again. And then if we do G, you can see it's applying across the entire line or the entire path. And you know what? I think I've got an extra space in here. Yeah, there we go. So any interior point is getting duplicated. Another thing I noticed about this input data is that there's actually quite a bit of duplicate paths. Uh, we, we should be safe to just delete those duplicated ones. And I should have actually done this before we added the spaces. So I'm going to undo some of the steps we made. And I'm going to do a sort command. And so also the, the order that the paths are given in doesn't really matter, so we're safe to like sort it like this. And to actually get rid of the duplicates, we're going to do a global command. And this is going to be kind of tricky. So first of all, I'm interested in the start of the line, and I want to match basically anything, and I want one or more of anything. And then I actually want to put this in a match group. So, oops, sorry. We're going to put that in a match group, and then outside of the match group, we'll look for a slash n or a new line. And then we'll use a slash 1 as a back reference to the match group. And then uh, we want to match one or more, so it, it could match more than once. And then what do we want to do with all this? Well, we just want to delete it. So d and then underscore to not put it in any register because we don't care about this. And I'm going to go <clears throat> back up in my history 
and redo what we did earlier. So let's start with the, the spaces. So here's where we added empty lines and then we did the, the thing here where we duplicate the interior point. So we'll do that again. So now let's set up a place where we can start doing the actual drawing. So tab ed, we'll call it drawing. This will make me a new tab. And then I'm going to yank the current line and I'm gonna give myself just 200 empty lines. Yeah, so basically I'm just trying to set up a giant coordinate plane. And so I've got some settings here that I'm gonna tweak. And so I'm gonna set uh, line numbers. I'm gonna set no wrap. I'm gonna set uh, virtual edit to all. And I'm gonna set the max uh, function depth to something big like 500. And then finally I'm gonna change the command height. Uh, two, three. I'm not going to explain this, but if you want a deeper explanation of what this is doing, um, I'll link in the description to my GitHub repository. There's where you can find kind of an in-depth explanation of all this. So let's try drawing these points. So back, or these paths. Back in the input file, um, I'll do what we talked about before, but this time let's do it in a macro. Double quote A, yanking a word to W. Double quote B, yanking a word to W. Double quote C, yanking a word to W. And finally, double quote D, yanking a word. At this point, I'm gonna switch over to the drawing tab. And if we check registers, A, B, C, and D, you can see all the data is in the correct register, so that's good. And at this point, I will first go to the first Y coordinate, which can be done by doing colon at B. And now the first uh, X coordinate can be done using at A followed by a vertical bar. And at this point, I'll set a mark, and now I'll move the cursor to the second coordinate point. So I'll do colon, colon at D followed by at C vertical bar. So at this point, I'll go into vert visual block and I'll do a back tick A to move the cursor back to the mark. And it's a back tick rather than a single quote because I want it to respect not only the line, but also the column. So back tick will do that for you. So then we'll replace it with X. And now we should have that first line drawn. So I'll go back over to the input file and I'll do another 2W and then finally quit the macro to stop recording. With any luck, we should be able to repeat this a bunch of times and have it draw all the paths. So let's try 999 at Q. So it's going. I should have taken out that registers command <laughs> from, from what we recorded, because that's probably slowing it down a little bit. But looks like it probably finished. Yeah, so here's, the, here's all the paths. When I first made this input file, I just made it like 200 lines long. But now that we know how many paths there are, how, how far down they go, we can make a slight optimization for the simulation that we're about to run here in a second by deleting the empty lines at the bottom. And so I'm gonna jump down to the bottom of the file with G, and then I'm gonna search using question mark for the very last occurrence of an X. Then I'll just go down a line and do D capital G. We're getting really close to the end here, but there's one important thing we have to figure out that we haven't talked about yet, which is how do we make the rock actually drop or how do we draw the little circle character and have it move through the path that we've just drawn. There's basically five different situations that we have to account for. So the first one is when there's nothing below the, the rock, uh, it just continues to fall straight down. The next one is if there's something right below it, like a, one of the paths that we've drawn, then it's, it's gonna come to a stop right there. Another case is if it's gonna land on top of a, a previously fallen rock, it's gonna first try to go left if that spot's open. And then the fourth case is if the left spot here is, is taken up and it falls on top of a rock, then it's gonna go right. And then finally, if there's, if there's nowhere else to go because all three of these spots beneath it are taken up, then it just comes to a stop. All right, so check it out. We don't need this file anymore. We just need this one drawing file with all our paths. Now, rocks always fall from the same column and that's 500, so 500 bar, vertical bar will get me there. I'll draw a rock by doing R, O, and now I'm gonna do Q, 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 Q. Five times, no more, no less. M, A to set a mark, then J to move down one. Now I'm gonna go into visual block, and same strategy as before, where I just want to know what's in this position, so I'm gonna put it in a register. Double quote A, Y. Then I'm gonna to move to the left with H and do the same thing. Visual block, double quote B, Y. Then I want to move two to the right, so 2L, visual block, 
uh, double quote C, Y. Then I'll use backtick A to return to the mark that I set. And I have to do this command called redraw. So we're writing something that's gonna be really recursive. And I found out that NeoVim tends to crash. VI and Vim didn't have this problem, but NeoVim will crash if we don't redraw the screen often. Now that I've got all three positions underneath the rock in some registers, I can make a giant recursive nested ternary to evaluate those positions and decide where to put the circle next. So I'll do execute and first I'll handle the case one where the position directly under it is clear. And so if that's true, then I want to do norm and I want to replace the current spot or where the circle is now with a space. And then I want to go J for down and then RO to replace the new cell with the, the rock. And then at this point, that's all I need to do. I just need to recurse so I can execute the macro from within the macro there. But there's another case here. So if that is false, then I wanna check the position that's to the left. Is the position to the left an empty space? I forgot um, the equal sign right here. Anyways, so now the, the spot to the left, is it free? What do we do if it's free? We do a normal command. Again, we start by replacing the current rock with with an empty space. And then I wanna go J and then H to go left. Then I want to replace the rock or draw the rock in this position, so RO. And then again, we'll recurse. Now if this is false, then we move on to the next case, which is stored at C. What does C look like? Is it free? If it's not, then, or sorry, if it is, then we'll do norm again. RO to start off with. This time we'll go JL to go down and right. Again, we'll, we'll redraw the, the rock and then we will recurse. Now, the final case, if all those cases have been false, we're gonna do another normal command. This time it'll just GG, go to the top of the file and then go back to the 500th column. So we're ready to restart. This is kind of like, okay, well I can't move the rock anywhere else. We're gonna go back up to the top so that we can repeat this process again. And I guess before the ending here, I need to do RO to draw the rock up at the top. So I'll hit enter. Let's quit recording at this point. And I think there's probably no way that I got this right on the first try. Yeah, so I just went ahead and retyped it using this other syntax. This is another way you can write macros. If, if you don't want to do it kind of live in the buffer, you can set the variable in an X command like this. Okay, let's see if this actually works. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to do a big number, 900 and Q. There we go. Okay, I think it may have stopped. Let's uh, count these rocks up. So I want to do a substitute command. I'm gonna use a range from the very first line until the end of the file, minus one, uh, substitute anytime I see a rock or a, an O. I don't wanna do anything with it. I'm just gonna use the, the end flag to just make it report the matches and not replace anything. And then G for globally matching across lines. And I know there should be like 843 matches. Oh, perfect, so this is good. I'm interested in getting that number 843 from my message to my buffer. Uh, one way we can do this, um, I will enter a new line here, in, so I'm in insert mode, and I can do control R equals for the trusty expression register. In here I'll do execute, um, and then messages. That's a command that will list my messages, and something else I can do, if I put a one in front of it, that's gonna give me just my first last message. And so, there we go, now it's in the buffer. From here on out, it's just a matter of cleaning up the file and getting rid of everything except for what we want. I'm going to delete till the top of the file, and then I'm going to search for 843, and then I'm going to delete all that white space between here and the very first column, so D0. And yeah, this is, this is the answer we're looking for. This problem came from the advent of code day 14, and so just to prove that this is right, there we go, 843.